Hey friends, happy Monday. I thought what a great place to start the vlog than here, where we try coffee together. Um, this vlog is going to be this week reading the books that my dad chose for me to read. So that will be this reading vlog. But I went to Aldi and got some, uh, like a bunch of stuff. But I got some cold brew coffee and they had the cold foam. And then they also had some oat milk creamer so I thought I also got some oat milk but I don't think I'm gonna put it in this one since the creamer has oat milk but I thought we could try the coffee so yeah let's do it my breakfast is working currently got an English muffin and a toaster and like a couple egg things cooking so I'm excited um, let's do a mug why not let me go grab one hold on Let's do this mug. You are my sunshine mug. Fun fact, and we'll use this too because this is a song that my dad used to sing to me all the time. The You Are My Sunshine song. So this will just be a dad based vlog, I guess. But um I'm trying to decide if I want ice or not. Let's do it without ice for now. So let's see. I've never had this brand before. Ah, Shape Well. Okay. I don't know if that was well enough, but I guess we'll find out. I don't want my English muffin to burn. Yeah. Let me know in the comments what is your go-to coffee order um, and what is your normal breakfast. Are you a breakfast person? Smells like coffee. I'm not gonna do very much. I mean, that was probably more than I really wanted anyways, but I'll try it out. Then we're gonna do this. Shake well for best taste. Always read the instructions. Ooh, that smells good. Pour some of this in here. And give it a little mixy mixy. I'm gonna drink it with the straw. Should we taste it before I put the cream in just in case I need more creamer? Let's see. I think it's good for now on the creamer. This also really good. I can already taste it because I'm going to put the cold foam on there and I don't want um, it to be too sweet because this is sweetened. Okay, so cute. Pretty. You are my sunshine. Put that in there gonna make the rest of my breakfast and sit down and enjoy this before I have to go to work. I work 12 to 7 today and then when I get home I will start one of the books that my dad picked for me so I'm excited. All right guys first I'm gonna apologize I have my retainer in so I have a lisp <laughs> um, but it is midnight on Monday and I am going to bed. I did not get any reading done today. When I got home from work this evening we had some family friends over and they were here until about 10 30 10 45 ish um and then I was talking to my family for a, a little bit so no reading was done but that's okay. Very tired. I have a long day tomorrow at work. It's one of my long shifts um 
so and my sister's been on vacation and she comes home tomorrow night so we'll see if I'll get any reading done tomorrow but I have to because I have six books that I need to read this week but I think I'm going to start with the green eyed prince because it's the novella that my dad picked so once I start reading I should like, stay on a roll so I just need to start but not now because now I'm going to bed so I will talk to you later bye alrighty friends it is Tuesday evening it is a little after 8 um I just got finished with work got my jammies on I, I love being in my jammies. Um, there's nothing better than jammies in a book or jammies in a movie. Literally top tier entertainment right there. Um, but I thought that I would jump into one of the books that I have to read this week. And I don't know which one I want to do. I know I said last night I'd probably do Green Eyed Prince. And I think, I think I'm leaning that direction. So... I have my books for the week here. Oh, I also have this included on here. Um, it's not priority this week, but it is something that I'm going to read this month. It's The Hunter in the Valley of Death by Brennan McPherson. Um, this is the June book of the month pick for our book club. So I put that up here just so I don't forget to read it. Um, but these are the books that my dad chose. So I think I'm going to pick up The Green-Eyed Prince because it's a novella and yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. But this is what the back of the book says. I normally don't do this, but it just feels right for tonight. So it says, in this retelling of the Frog Prince, an enchantress is murdering Queen Kartik's soldiers and threatening her kingdom. Kartek's healing jewel has been lost. Her only hope of saving her kingdom seems to lie in the hands of the green-eyed stranger who claims he can save her jewel and her people. But the prince is steep, but the price is steep, and the young queen doesn't have much time. Ooh. Some intrigue, maybe potentially some romance. So I'm excited for this. It looks like it is 176 pages, so super easy. Have a little chat says so I am seven chapters in about 67 pages hold on I'm gonna put a little marker in my spot okay so about 60 pages in and it's finally picking up and seeming a little interesting it took about 40 to 50 pages before I was like invested but I think that's because <laughs> that's when the like frog Prince character was introduced and there was a little more action like the first couple pages is explaining the world and the tribes and she's like the queen I'm assuming I really wish there was a glossary with all of the words that she's using and what each thing is who the tribes are because there's 10 tribes and then their group like her people and then 10 tribes and like she's the queen of her people and then the 10 tribes had a leader and the 10 tribes are like nomads and they just have no rules and they're just always killing each other and like killing like within like just not wonderful people and then their country, their kingdom, is a kingdom of peace. 
Um, and she can like heal them with a jewel. And it's not just clean. It looks like it's Christian um, because they keep referencing the maker. And the M is capitalized. Um, and the princess can heal with a jewel. She has like healing powers. But there's a quote in the book saying that the, her mother, before they passed away, um, reminded her that she wasn't the one doing the healing. The maker was healing. She was just the vessel. Um, so it's very much a Christian like idea behind it so anywho essentially what's happening there's a war um an enchantress is coming she demolished the tribes they came to the kingdom in kartek is that her name yes kartek um they implored that like she helped them she does she heals them and then we meet the frog I have some suspicions, but we'll see if they're correct. Um, but yeah, now that we're like getting into the story, I'm actually interested. And I will say there is a marriage of convenience. So y'all know that I am all about that. So yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm going to keep reading and then I will check in with you guys in a bit. It is... 10:49, and I have finished the Green Eyed Prince, and it was actually really good. It was cute. Um, the thought that I had was partially correct, but also different to where it kind of took me by surprise. So that was really cool. It was really interesting. Um, this was really really cool. I really liked it. Um, I was trying to like pull the knowledge I had of the frog prince story, but it wasn't a whole lot. <laughs> we weren't really raised on like fairy tales growing up. Like obviously we knew well, like Mermaid and Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, like the ones that Disney has kind of focused on. We knew those stories, but like the smaller ones like Princess and the Pea. Frog prints, little things like that. They weren't necessarily stories that I knew or know very well. Like I know the basis of them, um, but I don't know the full, full thing. Um, but this one was just—it was a cute novella. It was a great length for what it was, with forced marriage and um, there was great like Christian lines of like they were always like praying or giving thanks to the maker or like relying on him like they knew their strength came from him um but it also was great of just seeing past what people look like and seeing them the true person in their actions, what they do, how they speak, how they treat other people. Um, and just getting to know people as people and not what they look like. So it was very good. There was some magic type elements in here. Um, it's the enchantress is the like bad girl, the bad girl in the story. Um, and she has like dark power um control but it's not like a main plot point like it doesn't go into the deep grittiness of like how she has those powers what she does with them it's just you know she has them and you know that they're bad we don't agree with it that kind of thing so I'm trying to decide how I feel about it because the main girl did kind of annoy me like her attitude but I had to keep like checking myself going okay but Alicia if you were in this situation how would you react and honestly I probably would have reacted very similar to her um so I think I want to I'm between a four and a four and a half
and between let's just we're just gonna split it right down the middle we're gonna say 4.25 <laughs> I don't know what I'll do for Goodreads yet um but yeah it was really really cute and if you like um like retellings I definitely suggest this I'm definitely gonna be looking into her other books so, first one done that my dad picked out it was a good one we're starting off strong I was really invested and I'm excited to pick up my next one I don't know what it's gonna be yet I don't know if I'm feeling historical or if I'm feeling the love audit or if I'm feeling the fantasy vibe and just want to jump into the rejected king I don't know um let's decide come on come with me I cut off recording myself um Ferris of Heart is a Snow White retelling so if I wanted to go with the retelling vibes I could read this and it'll probably be a quick easy read Yeah, the more I'm looking at the stack, the more that just this just sounds good. So, Ferris of Heart will be next. Um, I can't decide if I want to read for a little bit longer tonight or if I want to go to bed. <laughs> I have to work early in the morning, um, but Wednesday is my shorter day. So, I'll have time to read tomorrow, but I'm in the reading mood. So, maybe I'll try to get a couple chapters of Ferris of Heart done and then reevaluate but yeah next up hi change of plans I brushed my teeth and washed my face um and had a huge back spasm um so I will be going to bed now <laughs> um, it's a little after 11 30 and um I've had a lot of back issues the last couple days I work for a chiropractor so it is under care thankfully um but having a rough rough night um so i did get one book done so i'm super proud of myself really enjoyed it i am gonna start ferris heart tomorrow um, but unfortunately i cannot start it tonight um i am gonna try to get some rest if i can um so yeah i'll see you guys later Wednesday. It's a little after 4.30 um, and I am picking up Ferris of Heart. I got home a little after 1 this afternoon, made myself some lunch, took a little nap see, um, and I have a couple hours before church so I am going to read for a little bit before we have church this evening and then when we get home I will probably try to read for a bit before I go to bed. So, yes. I'm feeling a little bit better today. My doctor was able to get me an adjustment and then I did one of the therapies at the office that kind of helped some with the inflammation um, that I that causes my back spasms. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling better today. Still a, little, still a little rough. I'll probably do another round of the therapy tomorrow at some point. Um, just to try to kick it to the curb because back pain is not fun. Uh, we have an idea of what causes it. I just have to sacrifice some things and figure out the root root cause. Um, so that's going to be interesting, but I think it is time for me to move forward in that direction um, and change some of my eating habits. Um, so that will be interesting but information you probably don't really care about I am feeling better though today <laughs> um but yes I am going to jump into Ferris of Heart very excited for this one and I will catch you guys with an update later it's almost 6 30 we're about to head off for church but I wanted to do a quick update real quick I got to chapter 11 which is page 101 and we've officially met the 
seven dwarves <laughs> um it's the seven old men of diamond d and oh my goodness i love them all so much we have all of the wonderful characteristics of the seven doors from snow white it's just so much fun they're gonna be a hoot um we have met our evil queen um and we've met penelope snow of course and titus kingsley is our prince charming he is a ranger and we had they have met and Penelope is now in the care of the Diamond D team group familia craziness um, and we've now been given the first like hint as to what the plot twist bad guy bad girl fight thing is going to be um it's predictable i can already see what's going to happen but there's still a good chunk so i'm sure other things are going to happen as well um but i can already see the miscommunication trope that is going to happen uh and that's okay because i can see it happening and it's predictable it's a western um it goes with the story a little bit like i'll I'll be fine but I can definitely already see what's gonna happen so if she can surprise me I'm gonna be very very excited but I'm really enjoying it so far it's super cute um, and I'm just excited to learn more about their characters and see them interact more together and just all the things that are come with gonna come with it so I'm gonna head out it is church time but I will be back to read some more of this this evening so first check-in so far going good update time update time everybody loves update time it is 11 20 and uh, this angle is rough for you guys huh let's see let's do this <laughs> i am 22 chapters into ferris of heart a little over 200 pages in and i'm really enjoying it so far Karen did a wonderful job with um, like having the Snow White feeling to the story without it being a direct retelling of it though I'm I still have a hundred pages left so a lot can happen in that time um, but the miscommunication that I saw coming came but not as not quite in the form that I thought it was going to come so that was nice that was a breath of fresh air there was still like a miscommunication but it makes sense considering the fact that the characters were are pretty much complete strangers <laughs> um and he's a Texas Ranger so his job is to find the bad guys and it makes sense why he would assume that this stranger who has connections could be the bad guy so thankfully they're having full conversations as adults the seven grandpas from the ranch are also helping and i love their characters and i'm really am having a good time with it super fast read have about little over 100 pages left like maybe 140 ish so we'll see if I'll be able to finish it tonight I feel like I'm flying through it pretty quick so I might be but it's already after 11 and I do have a very long work day tomorrow so we shall see but I am really enjoying it so I also want to kind of keep going and here's my thing I'm liking the story so I want to keep reading it but I'm not like to the point where I don't want the story to end you know that feeling in a book this I'm 
like I like the story but I want to be done with it if that makes sense like I want to know what the ending is I want to know how it all gets wrapped up I want them to get there happily ever after so I'm not trying to draw it out like I want to blow through it because it's easy and it's good and it's a great story probably one of the best she's had in a while um but at the same time I just want to fly through it because I just want the story to be over so I can know what happens so just wanted to do a bit of an update this book has so much faith content and scripture and prayer and Penelope in every moment is thanking God and turning to God and I love that so much about her character she's just so sweet and joyful and giving and just such a light of a character even after all the hardships she's faced in her life and she's just resilient um, and she truly puts her hope and her trust in the Lord and not in her physical surroundings and things like that and she sees everything as a blessing and it's just it's a breath of fresh air to read a story like this and just how full it is of faith content and what is his name Titus I wanted to call him Trent for some reason Titus is a little bit jaded um, he's super cynical but you can still see and tell that he respects God and like he believes in him and he, he talks to him just not as much as Penelope does um, so I'm really excited to see how that changes over the course of the story as well because that's one thing about Karen is she will always give you an amazing faith-based story with characters who change and I'm just really enjoying it so I'm gonna keep reading and then we'll see how far I get before I zonk out because I am getting a little tired I'm not gonna lie I didn't have a wonderful evening sleeping last night um so we'll see how long I last but here we go It is a little after 1 a.m. Teeth are brushed, retainer is in, face is washed. I'm ready for bed, but I did power through and I finished Ferris Depart. And I really enjoyed it. It was great. It was such a great spin and retelling of Snow White. And it had every like large pinpoint part that makes Snow White the Snow White story the Snow White story and one that everyone loves um but in a way that was still wholly western and Karen 100% I really enjoyed the characters um Penelope's character her like full sunshine all the time did great on my nerves a little bit um just time to time just like she just as much as she loved other people she had a hard time seeing herself worthy which at the same time I kind of I do get and that's why it was easy for me to step back and go, okay, this is really realistic. Um, cause there were just, there were aspects of her that I totally saw in myself and in other people that I know, um, and just people in general in life. So in that her character did feel very realistic. 
Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say except the characters were great. The storyline was great. Pacing was pretty good. Um, I feel like there were a couple times that it was a little, little drawn out. But at the same time, if it had moved any faster, I feel like I would have felt it was rushed. Does that make sense? <laughs> I feel like now I'm just kind of nitpicking because I really did enjoy it. It was so good and the faith and the restoration and the love and the found family and just all the things and the tie-in to um, like really finding a Proverbs 31 woman was impressive. <laughs> And I mean, not surprising because it's Karen and she always does such a great job paralleling um, Bible stories and Bible, Bible, just like what we should be doing and how we should be living and holding that. Um, also, the author's note was a lot of fun. That was a cool little tidbit. So if you've read the book, make sure to read the author's note at the back of it. That was fun. And also, okay, there's a scene in the book. It's not spoiling. I'm not going to spoil what, what's happening in the scene, but what is his name? I keep forgetting. Titus. You'd think I would remember that because I know a Titus, but I just keep wanting to call him Travis now. I think I had, a, I wanted to call him a different name earlier. Titus. Um... He says a line and he's like, be careful what you say about her. And it just reminded me of, well, I mean, it's a happily ever after. It's not a spoil. His line is, be careful what you say about my future wife. And the whole scene reminded me, if you have seen ever after, which is the best rendition of Cinderella, there's a scene where the evil stepmother and the stepsisters are like called before the king and queen and the prince and then the prince makes direct eye contact with the stepsister who's been like trying to get his attention and he's like oh i don't know if you've met my wife and the camera pans and it's cinderella which her i don't even remember her name right now Ooh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but that, those scenes, just that in a book, sign me up. I don't know if that made any sense. It probably didn't, but it did in my mind and it made me happy and I'm all for it. Not sure what I'm going to rate it yet. Um, it doesn't, uh, I think... I'm trying like it feels like a five but it also doesn't quite feel like a five if that makes sense but a four and a half seems too low let me ponder it I will write my review um, for it that I'll put on my blog and Instagram and Goodreads and everything. And then as I'm typing and as things of the story come to me, maybe the rating will be signified, like solidified in my head. Oh, all right, well, I'm going to go to bed. I have a pretty long day tomorrow. Um, but look at me. I did it. I finished another book in a day. I have... Four more to go. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm kind of, I don't know if I want to keep up with my historical mood and read where the road bends or if I want to pick up the love on it. Decisions, decisions. So we'll see what I'm feeling tomorrow. All right. I'll check in with you guys then. Hey friends. It is Thursday. 
uh, like close to 11 o'clock at night. Um, I have not read anything today. I don't know if I'm going to. Um, I had a really long day at work um, and then I came home, had dinner and started editing my video that is up before this one where I was getting out of a reading slump. Um, and that took me way longer than I thought it was going to, but considering the fact that it's an hour-long vlog, it's probably why. Um, so, yeah, did that, spent a little time with family, and just kind of focused on other bookish things, uh, but I have not read anything yet. I do have plans tomorrow. I'm going to be meeting up with a bookstore friend, and we're going to be meeting a town not too far from either one of us, so... That's going to be exciting, going to have lunch together, probably go to Half Price Books, just hang out, chat, catch up. We haven't seen each other since February, um, so I'm really, really excited. So, uh, I think my goal for tonight is to finish folding and putting away my clean laundry so that my room is clean, and then I'll probably just hit the hay for today, and then tomorrow I will pick up one of the books. I was kind of in the mood for Where the Road Bends by Rachel Fordham. Kind of still in a historical mood, but the love, the love, <laughs> the love audit sounds so good right now too. So we'll see what I'm feeling tomorrow. I'm going to try to wake up earlier, early in the morning tomorrow. Maybe I might sleep in. I don't know. We'll see. I really do enjoy sleep, but I haven't been able to sleep in the last couple days. Um, but I also want to be up and get some things done mainly reading before I have to hit the road and meet up with my friend Trisha. So yeah, that's it. Just wanted to check in and say, Hey, we're here. And yeah. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Good night. It is about 7:30. I've been home for about an hour. Um, I had a wonderful time with Trisha. We went to half price books. We filmed a couple reels. We went to Chick-fil-A and just kind of talked um, and just spent a majority of the day together. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun and really thankful we got to do that. So that was a lot of fun. But I wanted to show you what I got from Half Price Books. Honestly, that had one of the worst Christian fiction sections I think I've ever seen in a bookstore. Like, I think my Barnes & Noble has a bigger Christian fiction section. Like it was one shelf and actually no two two I think like two but it was just like it was it was probably one of the worst worst Christian fiction sections I think I've ever seen so I didn't get any Christian fiction books um but I did get a couple um middle grade books I've been on a kick on that I guess I don't know haven't read any of the ones that I have yet but I am going to be doing a video about that soon so I'm excited but I got this one called a whale a whale of the wind and it was $3.99, which is fine. But I got this because I saw this at a Goodwill a couple months ago and read the back of it. It sounded super interesting. And then I just didn't pick it up for some reason. I don't know my reasoning, but I didn't pick it up. And since then, there have been multiple times where I'm like, you know what? I wish I had that whale book. So when I saw it, I was just like, well guess I'm paying four dollars for it which is fine so I'm excited about this it looks super cute inside it's got like pages of like little pictures and stuff so really excited about this and then I got this book it looked cute it's called the candy makers and it's a candy coated mystery full of mouth-watering surprises so, I don't know, it just looked really, man, it got a little banged up, that's okay. Um, it just looked really cute, and this was five bucks, and a little, little chunker of a book, so I'm excited to try this out. We'll see, we'll see. And then I also got a VeggieTales movie, um, because even at 23, I still watch them. And I got Abe and the Amazing Promise, and this one was five bucks, so not terrible. So I've got a couple things I'm excited for, again. We spent like an hour and a half in there just kind of walking around. 
there even if I hadn't purchased anything I still would have been happy it was a great time with a good friend and just being around books in general makes me happy and we just got to chat about books and all the stuff so we had a wonderful time but now I am home I put my hammock up outside at least the base of it so I'm excited for that so that I can sit outside this summer and just kind of soak in the sun while I read but I think I'm gonna go ahead and maybe get a quick bite to eat because it's been a while since we ate we ate and then sat in the chick-fil-a and talked for hours and then where we met was about an hour from me um so I'm a little peckish so I think I might get something small and then put my jammies on and I think I'm gonna start the love audit it just sounds really good so that's what I'm gonna do for probably the rest of the evening and then I have to work in the morning so we'll see how this goes but yeah it was a really fun day and I'm so glad we got to do it ah it was so much fun I love it I love it I love it a quick check-in it's a little after 11 30 I'm getting ready to get ready for bed I have a long day tomorrow um thankfully I remembered but I have to be at work earlier than I thought I did um so yeah so I really I really need to hit the hay but I did start the love audit I started it later than I originally planned we had um a friend over for dinner she was here until like a little after nine so I wasn't able to get to reading till like almost 10 just because of like cleaning up from dinner and stuff like that so I got about a hundred pages into the love audit and I'm really liking it so far um very humorous so it is a workplace office romance with hate to love um and like kind of grumpy sunshine but I don't necessarily consider him a grump he's just kind of gruff with her and he just doesn't care what people think he's it's like an extrovert introvert situation and that is very different from grumpy sunshine um so it's like opposites attract more than anything in my mind um, because he doesn't care what people think about him and she does and I just find her character to be super relatable um so yeah I'm really enjoying it I love the fact that she just totally reminds me of Elle Woods like every outfit she has worn so far has been there has been some shade of pink in it somewhere and she's just bubbly and she's just she's fun and she's loud and she's bright and just I don't know I just really like her and he's just like tall dark and handsome and gruff and again introverted and he's work focused and he doesn't have time for distractions and just their interactions are cracking me up um and as they're like realizing that they are attracted to each other they're so like trying to keep up the walls like no I don't have time for this no like I don't want that like ugh, no they're annoying it's just it's a fun fun inner dialogue and I love it because there is like found family kind of where oh I should tell you their names um <laughs> what are their names Charlotte Charlotte and Callum. So Charlotte is uh, roommates with three other girls. There's Sophie, Grace, and MJ. And they all have stories. So I'm really excited to read those when I'm done with this. I understand why this series gets hyped. It's super fun. And I will say what's really nice is not only is it not only is it clean and sweet, there's no language, um, but both characters are God-fearing. So they've been praying and they've been like referencing just like different things and just using it it feels realistic to someone who has a relationship with God like the prayers that they pray the quick things like that they're thinking of just like you know the quick prayers that you just kind of shoot off day to day even about mundane things you know so I'm really enjoying that I was um, pleasantly surprised by that I didn't realize that that was a um like gonna be a thing so yeah I'm really enjoying it so far I'm excited to pick it up and finish it tomorrow um yeah I'm just I'm really liking it so 
All right, I really do need to go to bed. <laughs> Such a long day tomorrow. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to check in and say I did start reading, got some done. I'm excited, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Good night. Hi. It is Saturday mid-afternoon, or I should say late afternoon, <laughs> early evening. It's probably getting close to 5, but I just finished the little about it. <laughs> I get it I understand the hype oh my goodness I thank you so much Catherine for sending me this what, the first two books in the series I'm so excited because the rest of the series is out so I will be buying the other two books so that I have them so that I can read them because it's about Grace and Sophie and MJ and I am so excited um, but this book I don't know what all I have said, what I said last night, I, t I don't remember, um, but just getting more into it, I just, I don't think I've connected to a character, like a main girl character like this in a long time, but I saw so much of myself in Charlotte, it, it hurt a little bit. <laughs> she is a people pleaser to the max, um, and me also me yes hi I am the problem um and just so much of her her internal dialogue and like things that she struggled with and the fact that she had family and friends who loved her and were real with her and honest with her like not brutally honest but brutally honest and I'm very thankful because I also have that support system so they let me know when I've gone too far or I'm going too far or going off the deep end and so I also have that support system. So it was really nice to see that shown in a book and just having her group of friends, her parents, her brother, just having those people who love her because she's her and not the watered down version that she gives. Um, so I just, I loved it very, very much. And then Callum. Oh my word, he was great. He was her opposite in pretty much every way um except for no I mean he loves but the thing is he shows it different but they just worked well together they were so compatible and he had a lot of past hurts and he was jaded and he let that affect him but then they like had a discussion and it was great and like it just it worked it worked it worked it worked and I'm obsessed and it was so cute and I loved that like God was mentioned so much in this like little prayers were prayed throughout the whole thing there's um a scene where she like sees his bible and it's well loved and that was just such a nice surprise I didn't realize that that was going to be a part of the book but I I loved that because to me it was such a great representation of like real relationship like a real relationship with God like you know mundane things like a random prayer about traffic like <laughs> but that is such such a real life thing um and I just, I, I really loved it and I really connected with that part of the story too because God does care about the mundane things and we're supposed to have a, t a relationship where we just talk to him, you know? We don't have to have like these crazy these and now prayers and he just wants a relationship. So it was just, I just, I liked all aspects of it and the parents, uh, her mom and his mom and just the southern southernness that was this book I loved it so much and it was just sweet there were so many moments that I literally was like laughing out loud there were moments that I was like wishing that I annotated because I was like man I want to remember this I, this is that's such a good line that's such a good scene but I don't so that's okay I just know that I loved it and I highly recommend this and I'm very excited to read one last song at some point that is about um, Grace which is Charlotte's best friend and Charlotte's brother Wyatt who is a country music star be still my heart so I'm very very excited about that um, hopefully I can get to that one soon but I am excited to check off another book for the week and then I think 
Next up, I'm going to be picking up The Rejected King by Courtney Kiesel. And hopefully, that one's kind of small, so I might be able to get through it pretty quick. Um, and then I might be able to pick up either Where the Road Bends or The Lines Between Us, since those are the other two that are on my TBR for this week. So I'm really excited. I've had a wonderful day, worked, and then came home, had lunch, and then after lunch just have spent my afternoon reading. So absolutely perfect. Loved it to bits and pieces. So Hi, I'm checking in again. It is a little after 8.30, and I am really close to being done with The Rejected King. I don't, re <laughs> I don't remember what time I started it, um, but I'm just flying through it. It is short, which is nice. It's like 260 something pages, so super easy, but I'm really enjoying most of it. Um, so essentially what this is, is a futuristic historical time. Let me explain what I mean by that. The book starts out in 2055. So like this time, right? Another 30 years. So with all of like our modern technology, it talks about Alexa, it talks about um, like just like different things that cars and things and modern technology that we have now and is the norm for everybody. Well then there was the desolation. And when that happened, now we are like 200 years past the desolation. So it's like 2255 or something like that. Let me double check. Yeah, 2250. 200 years after the desolation. And it's essentially new kingdoms that have gone back to historical times. So like they don't have cars. It's like by carriages again. They're they have laws where there's the ruling class and the working class and the ruling class can only marry the ruling class and the working class is looked down on and they don't need the essentials. They don't have furthering education and things like that. So it kind of reverted back to old times. So that's been super interesting because it's still it's not fantasy in the oh this is a whole new world with words that don't make sense and things that don't make sense it almost gives me historical vibes <laughs> because we're going back to there um but the king is young 24 25 um and he's like an he has all these ideas and he doesn't have much favor because everybody's just traditional they don't think that the working class should get educations and they don't think that the working class deserve, deserves cars or that they should change. So his ideas are too much and the things that he's tried have failed. Um, so he doesn't have like great, they have a term for it, um, like ratings in the kingdom. And they do this thing every year, the promenade where they bring in 60, not every year, every time a king needs to get married so the last one was like 60 years before when his parents got married um so they bring in 60 young women and they're like going through and it's kind of like the bachelor because there's like one-on-one -on -one dates and it's all these women and it's kind of funny but they bring in a director and him and the director had this moment at the beginning of the book her name is emery it's king davin and emery and Emery is from the working class, but she had worked with the high ruler who um, was like up against King Davin in the vote. So she's like used to the politics. She grew up in a high ruler's home like around them. So she gets hired on because of this moment that they had shared that was hilarious. And it keeps being brought up, but they're both falling for each other but they can't so it's kind of like a forbidden romance thing because she's working class he's the king he needs to technically marry someone who's in the like the ruling class and she's and here's where I'm struggling she's quote unquote in a relationship with her childhood sweetheart the problem is 
no one is acting like it like the guy completely just brushes her off she thinks about it from time to time like when she sees him and she's like oh we should be getting married we should be getting engaged he's just driven because he's one of the royal guards so it's just kind of weird and then Emery and Davin are like falling for each other and having these moments and Davin keeps having to remind himself like no because he thinks that she's engaged mind you which is my thing so that's what's kind of bothering me because there's been no communication in that aspect and I'm 162 pages into it like nothing concrete has happened one way or another and I think that is one of my biggest pet peeves is when one of the characters is in a relationship whether it's good or bad or I agree with it or not because it's not really a relationship but she believes it is and the king believes that she believes it is and I just I don't like that trope um but what's weird about it and what's like throw me off is that it is such a far off plot line that I keep forgetting about it like I'm just so engrossed in these two people falling in love and like he can be himself and they're laughing and talking about books and she has all these ideas and they're great together and she's making friends with everyone and she fits in and she'd be a perfect queen and she's just she's fun and I have a feeling that the queen really like the queen mother really likes her um potentially <laughs> I, I can't quite tell that I'm like when this Portland kid keeps popping in randomly it just kind of takes me out of the story because I'm like oh yeah I forgot about him so I'm just kind of we'll see how it goes um I still have like a hundred pages left so a lot can happen in a hundred pages so I'm gonna get back to reading this um and yeah other like other than that <laughs> I am really really enjoying it so I'm on the fence I have feelings but I'm gonna change into my pajamas and go back out to the couch where I have had my butt all day pretty much I don't think I've moved much from the couch um other than to eat and use the restroom so perfect Saturday but yeah that's that um yeah I am curious because I don't know if the series follows the same characters and I don't want to spoil myself but I also have to know so no okay Ooh. so they get just in case anybody needs to know um it looks like happily ever after has come at the end of the stories because based on the back of this book it's not about Davin and Emery which thank god because that's one thing about series I struggle with um is when they follow the same characters and then I have to like get through so many yeah nice okay exciting everyone gets their own happily ever after Okay then, I'm going to change and I'm going to go back to reading. Um, there might not be many more clips of me like physically reading um, because I keep forgetting my camera in my room and again I've been sitting on my couch all day. So if you don't see any more physical videos of me reading, I apologize. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you like to see. It doesn't, like, I like filming them but also if I don't have them I'm not upset. So you guys let me know. and the next vlog will know but okay I I really gotta know what's gonna happen so I'm gonna go now bye I apologize that the lighting's a little rough but it's a little after 10 and I just finished The Rejected King by Courtney Kiesel and I really liked it the ending was cute it really was I really did like the ending um I was wrong the queen mother was not on board um so that was nice I was kind of hoping for you know the mom to go against the norm uh, she didn't so that shouldn't have surprised me but it was a, a little weird how that happened um a little selfish on her part but like I also get it so that's why I'm not letting that part affect my rating 
too too much because like realistically I get it <laughs> so um, I'm sitting I'm, on Goodreads I think I have it at a four I'm between a three and a half and a four and I'm trying to decide if the plot point of her being in a relationship for half the book like how much did that bother me enough to like affect the rating if that makes sense because I think if they had broken up earlier it probably would have been a five star read so like I know that it affected my rating 100% because that bothers me to no end I think it's stupid it's dumb I don't care that nothing technically happened I don't care I know as a reader that they're not going to end up together but they don't know that in the moment and I just think it's wrong and I don't like it um so it did affect my rating so I think I'm going to keep it at a four right now um I'll kind of like because I'll ponder it but when I think about it I loved the story and I loved Davin and Emery they were so cute in their interactions and just them seeing each other and like not caring about class not caring about station or anything like that it just felt like a good love story it was just that like her in Portland for the first half just didn't make sense because he didn't actually put and then he's like kind of involved a couple times I don't know I didn't like it <laughs> but other than that I loved the story so I think I'm right now I'm good at a four um, because if I if that wasn't in there, 100% would have been a five star read. So, because it made me feel all the giddy feelings, you know. Other than that, when I just wanted to punch people, but I didn't. The book stayed intact. I did not throw it. So, yeah, finished another one. It was good. I'm excited to try the other books in the series, especially since they're about other people. And I got their whole happily ever after wrapped up in this. It's royalty. It's kind of sort of fantasy, it's flirtation, and it is not Christian fiction. I would like to point that out. Um, there is like no entity of God, um, there's no allegory. It is very much just a clean, closed door read where they are attracted to each other, um, but there is no swearing or anything like that. So that's, that's that, but there is no like, ran an allegory like there or like in the green eyed prince where they actually mentioned god and they had a maker and things like that that is not a thing here um so if you do pick up the series just know going into it that's that but i really enjoyed it otherwise so i think i'm good with the four as far as if i pick up something else hmm. it's 10 o'clock i have church tomorrow and then we're meeting and celebrating my cousin's birthday tomorrow Tomorrow does wrap up the end, but tomorrow night, I might, I don't know. Let's grab the books and let's figure out what I'm kind of in the mood for because I have two historicals left. That's it. So let's see. Okay. So the books I have left are Where the Road Bends by Rich Fordham and The Lines Between Us by Amy Lynn Green. So this is thicker, thicker than a snicker. Uh, let's see. 374 pages. I don't know, this is kind of sounding like flipping through it. Not that I've really read anything, but it just oh, it kind of sounds good. And then Where the Road Bends is... Wow, I really... Taken Take your time, Alicia. 305 pages. Here's my thing. I don't like knowing what the books are about, so I don't want to read the back of them. I feel like this one would be cute. Like, cute. I've heard it's really good. I know Amanda loves this book, and I think Oshina read it and loved it. So I have a feeling that I'm really going to like it because... I I love Amanda and Oshina. We have very similar reading taste. But this one just sounds really good. 
and I feel like oof, this font is so little. It's so tiny. Look at that. I don't know if it's focusing, but that is some tiny font. Um. I feel like my dad was like really on board for this one. Like he read the back and he was really excited about this one. This one we were joking about. I think I think I'm gonna go with the lines between us. So I'm gonna start this. Here's what I might do too. I might try a chapter of this and a chapter of this and see which one grabs my attention. That's what we're gonna do. And I'll take you along with that for that. Come on! are incredibly long in this book 24 pages <laughs> though it didn't it started on page 9 so still it's a lot of pages for one chapter so she's rescued the injured guy and they've had their first conversation and that's about the gist of it you see it's essentially everything that's explained on the back of the cover that he was injured she finds him on her land and brings him back to her house. So, there's that. Now I'm going to pick up the first and read the first chapter of The Lines Between Us. between us I just finished the prologue and I want to keep reading this um, so it starts off with letters between Dory and Gordon and it starts like the letters start a couple weeks before World War two and like when before Pearl Harbor when we did like got into the war um, and the letters were just like they started off as love letters and then it just like drastically shifted so I'm very interested to see how she turns this around and with his beliefs because he's a Quaker um, so he requested that he didn't go into war and Dory was really upset because she believes that he should be out there fighting for our freedom so I'm very interested to see how this kind of gets taken care of we'll see how it goes but I think I'm going to go with this pick because I'm invested already already it is a little after midnight and I think that I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night um, but I got a hundred pages into this on chapter 10 and I'm not sure how I feel yet um, the story's interesting it's disjointed in the way that they're the characters are in two separate places fighting two totally different things um, so Gordon is a um, milk jumper um, so he is stationed in Oregon stationed is weird because he's not in the army technically I don't think or maybe he is but he's not in active battle due to his beliefs, um, which everyone has a prejudice against and no one treats them right because they all think that they're cowards for not going to war. But essentially, any fires that happen, they are the ones that would jump out of planes and put the fires out. Um, and then, 
so it's Gordon and his best friend Jack is brothers with Dory who is the main girl character who is a piece of work <laughs> she's she's a rough one she's very judgmental but in a way that like I have to keep reminding myself it makes sense for this time period um but, like there was a black officer who is a paratrooper and she like asked him a question and it was just very like like a funky question to ask and then when he like said something about it she's like in her mind she's like I, was, I wasn't doing it no it was just an innocent question you know she just has one of those attitudes and like she's right about everything and she's always down to get in trouble and just she's a um she's a part of the women's army corps working in a garage serving her country in my head and i mean i guess because i wasn't a part of this but to me they're both serving their country so i don't really understand why it's such a big deal um i don't i don't know um both jobs need to be done <laughs> so i don't know so like i get it from a different perspective why he believes it and why he did a set where he was out and he stepped like he didn't want to be drafted to be an active war as an active soldier um and i also get the prejudice from the groups in the time period but Dory's character is rough, like she completely shut off her brother um, and he gets hurt severely and there's just, there's a lot of mystery, like there's a lot of intrigue that's happened in the last hundred pages and I'm just trying to wrap my brain around all of it. <laughs> so I'm very curious to see what will happen in the next chunk. Okay, quick update because I just read the back of the book. And I feel like after reading the back of the book and what I know about the story, I think it's really about to pick up now. I, the characters are about to be together. Um, not like together together, but like on page together. So sparks are about to fly, I'm sure. Tensions are going to ride high. Um, so I feel like the action part of it is probably going to be starting soon. Um... Because, again, there's like a mystery kind of at play um, and secrets that are happening. I feel like I'm also going to struggle a little bit with the characters because now they're really going to get on page together. And seeing just their differences is going to be interesting. So, I'm hoping that they're redeemable. I'm hoping I can root for them. Or there are clear lines that these people just aren't meant to be together and they're just very different. We'll see. I don't know. A lot can happen. And Amy's a beautifully talented author. So if anyone can do it, she can. So I am excited to keep reading it. But tomorrow, because I am tired and going to sleep. So good night. <laughs> All right, guys, it is Monday. Um, Monday, I was gonna say something. The day after Sunday. Yeah, the day. it's a new week. Um, but I thought we had to have my dad come in and be a special guest again to talk about the wrap up of the books that I read this week and see which ones I got to. Um, I'm gonna see which ones he thinks, if he was paying attention, to when he saw me to see if he remembers which ones I read. You didn't read them all? Not all of them. Listen, I, I'm i proud of so myself. we're doing a wrap up. Uh, we are. I gave you five books you in gave a me novella. Okay, and I'm very proud of myself. Did you read a novella? I did. I did. one on one? <laughs> I will not tell you how many I read. Let's see if you can remember which ones you caught me reading this week. You think you can? Probably not. I was okay. asleep. 
And then I'm going to see if you, I'm going to see what you predict if I liked it and what my star rating was. There are up to five stars. Am I getting paid for this? In love. Oh my word. I should be worth like six or seven figures. <laughs> I told you in the first video I couldn't afford you. You are at here pro bono. I did all that work for whatever she did. I did a lot of work. I, did, I, I did proud my part. of myself. And I, I did, did most my, of my, I did my part. Mm -hmm. I did my part. I said three to five in between. And you picked six. Five in a novella. <laughs> all right. So there are up to five stars. And some of them are half stars, I'm pretty sure. So, hold on. How many stars do I know? Yeah. I'm going to get this and grab Goodreads. You didn't read the book. How do I, I know did. if you gave it stars or not? <laughs> i got to pull up Goodreads because some of them I don't remember how many stars I gave. Okay. See what I have to put up with? I'm all over the place. Maybe not. I forgot. Goodreads server is down. Okay. Well. So she doesn't know what she I read either. <laughs> I know what I read, but I don't remember what I rated them. I will. So how do you know if I'm telling you the truth or not? How about this? We'll just say, did I like it or truth not? Truth be told. We'll just say if I liked it or not, because I don't remember the stars. So, a recap. He gave me The Love Audit, Fairest of Heart, The Green-Eyed Prince, Long, Where the Road Bends, The Rejected King, and The Lines oh, Between Us. So, these are the six he picked. Do you remember which ones I read? Some of them. Yes. <laughs> How many times did I come in here while you were reading? <laughs> I've been reading a lot the last two weeks, so. She's just trying to prove the fact that I don't pay attention. Hey, but I mean, every time you came out, I think I was reading a different book. I did fly through the ones that I read really fast. So which fast. ones did you read? And then I'll tell you which ones you were reading when I came in. <laughs> okay, let's start with... I think you are reading that one. This one? Mm -hmm. I did read this one. The Green-Eyed Princess is the one I started with, actually. I read it in, like, a couple hours. Figured. Did I enjoy it? Yes. I did. Good job. That is about She the, knows if she doesn't agree with me, she won't get fed this week. <laughs> I, I was going to say I have my own money, but I, I don't really, and I'm without a car, so I'm kind of relying on you. She's really broke. <laughs> so The Green-Eyed Prince was the Frog Prince retelling, and it was cute. There was a romance in it, too, and it was just a cute little novella. I liked it. And you... Didn't even want to kiss that frog that was on the garbage can last night. I, I asked you to, sure didn't. I asked her to kiss a frog last night, see if there was a prince behind it, but no, she wouldn't do it. Um, the frog ran away. No. Yeah, you scared him. I pushed him off the garbage can. <laughs> Fairest of heart. You were reading that one. I was. I read this right after Green Eyed Prince. Did I like it? Of course you did. Of course I did. It's a Karen Woodmeyer book. It was actually really good. It was a Snow White retelling, Western retelling. And she did a very good job keeping similarities between the Snow White you know from, like, Disney. Snow White. And not Grimm's fairy tales, because theirs are terrible. But it was good. I liked it a lot. Did I read this one? No. <laughs> I did read this one. Yes. She read it. <laughs> okay, did, did you I like, like it? it? I did. I really did. She I really it. did. I did. I did. I did. I got, it was I'm, really good. I'm one for two. <laughs> so I liked that one. This was a rom com. And I was actually impressed, and I told them this too, because um, there were Christian elements in this, and not all of the sweet rom coms have them. They're just like clean. But this one did. Very good. I liked it. Very, very. Nice. Where the road bends. Did I read it? I'm trying to remember if you were reading this one the other night when I came in. Were you? 
Yes. I did not read this one. I read a chapter of it. So you read some of it. I read some of it. So. And from the first chapter, he did not get shot. This is the one where we weren't sure if he got shot. Yeah. You weren't sure if he got shot. <laughs> I read a chapter of this injured. one. It's he's he, well, he is injured. Everything that you read on the back of it happens in the first chapter. So you basically read so the book. So I read the book. <laughs> I am interested at some point to read this. Um, don't know when, but there's the first one that I didn't One complete. choice she didn't like. The Rejected King. Did I read it? No. I did read it. I started it, and I finished it. Did I like it? Yes. I did like it. And I'm very excited to say that each one of the books in the series is its own story. So I can take my time getting to the rest of them. I can read my other books. Because I was, I was going to be really upset. I was a little apprehensive putting them on the pile, thinking that it was going to be a fantasy series that I needed to read the next book right after. And I didn't want to start this at the beginning of the week and then want to read the rest of the series and put off the rest of these books. But each story is its own happily ever after. So, but I did like it. Very good. Very good. Glad you did. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, I was going to say, good purchase. Good purchase. All right, the lines between us. No. <laughs> I got One's got to be no. I got 110 so pages into it. <laughs> so she read them all. Not all the way through, but she read them I all. read pieces of it, um, but I started this late, late Saturday night and needed to go to bed so that I would be somewhat pleasant on Sunday. And you succeeded. I did. Somewhat. Somewhat. Yes, and then we got busy and I wasn't able to read it. But I did read this and I have been enjoying it. There's a lot of intrigue to it that I was kind of surprised about. So I'm excited to finish it at some point. But the rest of this book is a little daunting, I'm not going to lie. It's so many pages and the font is so tiny. It's not any thicker than some of those other ones over there. Are you kidding me? This is like large print. Look at that. Mm. I can read that without my glasses. I, <laughs> I was so surprised when I opened it. But this one is interesting because the guys are Quakers, or at least one of them is. So that's why he didn't get. He did the. What's that? He's he? a conscientious objector. Right. Yeah. Conscientious. Yep. I meant that's what a I meant to say. A conscientious objector. <laughs> I am my mother's daughter. <laughs> but um, yeah. So that's why. Say it quicker. slowly. Conscientious. Conscientious. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, out of the six books... Ugh. She read them all. I read bits of all of them. I finished four of the six. And I guess three. I or four. I don't remember. I don't know. That's how bad my memory is. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> So but, how do you know if you read them or not? I could have been right on all of them. On, on all of them. The bookmarks gave a little bit of it away. But I really enjoyed this week. It did push me because I, um, I read four books this week. It pushed me to read way past when I should have been sleeping. And I... Kind of like me right now. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing it. Thanks for picking the books that I read this week. You're Last welcome. week, I should say, because this week I'm starting a new, a new group of books. Mm -hmm. so, I enjoyed them. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along this week with me as I read the books that my dad picked. It was a lot of fun. Let me know in the comments below which family member I should grab for this next. I still have my mom, my brother, and my sister that I can do. Oh, and my, my dog. Oh yeah, you want your dog in here? Uh, that one I might do somewhere else. <laughs> Your mom That'd will be, be gone this week. Yeah, that's true. And I have a different video planned for this week, so. There you go. There I go. Easy peasy. Your secret safe with me. <laughs> Don't forget, you can check out my blog at fortheloveofchristianfiction.blogspot.com. You can check out my Instagram at fortheloveofchristianfiction.com. That's not right. For the love of Christian fiction. That's it. <laughs> All my other links are in the description box below. I think that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. See ya.